Before starting to load data into the data warehouse, you decide to carry out some data profiling according to Kimball's suggestions. On page 296 in the book, Kimball says that there are different sources for detailed information about an organization's data. That includes the source system itself, data experts, humans in the organization who know about the data that the organization has, and existing query and reporting systems. In this course, we will only have access to the source system, so this is the only place where we can uh, verify the quality of the data. On page 308 in the book, Kimball writes that there should be some primary outcomes of the data profiling process. The first one is a basic go or no go decision on whether or not the candidate data can be included in the data warehouse. The second part is discovering if there are data quality issues in the source system and if these can be corrected in the ETL flow. Finally, the uh, data profiling also serves to uncover any unanticipated business rules that the modeler can then learn about before starting the modeling process. In this video, I will show you how to carry out some very basic data profiling on the Northwind source database. Let's do some data profiling for our customers dimension. We know that all the attributes that we have decided to include for our customer dimension come from the customer's table in the Northwind source database. So let's go into the Northwind source database, expand tables, find customers and right click, choose select top thousand. So from the results sets here, we can clearly see that we do have some issues with data quality. We have a lot of nulls showing up. So nulls are going to behave strangely in the data warehouse when you aggregate on them or analyze on them. So you definitely want to handle nulls. So let's deep, uh, dive a little deeper into this why is region null for a lot of values. There's definitely a hierarchy between uh, these different address fields. So you have an address within a specific city, you have a city within a specific region, you have a region within a specific country. Let's uh, right now just look at region and country. So I'm going to delete everything else and then also delete this, remove that one then do a group by clause here, oh. group by region and country. Let's add another one here where we make a count and then we have to write is null and re region. And if region is null, then what should it return? One, then count all those as how many. If I execute this, now I get a result set saying how many uh, records do I have for this combination of uh, region and country. And I also list all the nulls. So I have one record that has null in both country and region. So something crazy about that one record. But then typically what I see here is that I have nulls for uh, countries outside of Canada and US, you can see here all the US addresses, actually all of them have um, a region put in there. For Venezuela, I can see that I also have regions here. Something quite strange about one being DF and some of them being uh, the actual names of the region. I don't know if there is a region in Venezuela called DF. You'll have to look into that, to that. I'm not really familiar, familiar with Venezuelan regions. Um, I can see that for the UK, I have one with a region on it and six without. And from my knowledge about the U UK, this makes sense. I love right. Isle of Man, these things outside of the mainland will typically have a region put on there when you have to write letters to them, I think. Then for uh, at least a lot of European countries here, I'm missing region on them, except for Ireland. So maybe Ireland has something with region. Then Australia, Argentina, everything here, I'm missing regions as well, but I have for Brazil and Canada. So I will need to find out what I should do about all these uh, null values for regions and I have to come up with a strategy for handling that in my ETL flow later. Um, 
Now let's imagine that the customer's table is not some 90 rows long, but several hundred thousand rows long, then it's going to take too long to just like scroll down and have a look at it. Then what you could do is remove this top thousand since we now are dealing with several hundred thousand records, take all the fields from the select statement, put it in a where clause, and then write is null or is null or is null. So we're asking now if any of these fields or any of the other fields is null, then return it to the record set. Since we know that uh, the null issue is big on region, let's just exclude that. And fax and phone are not going to be included in, in uh, our dimension. So definitely let's exclude that because it doesn't make sense to aggregate on phone and fax because there are usually going to be tied one to one with the customer ID or the customer company name. So you can just use company name instead and it would be more descriptive for an analysis. So now we have where customer ID is null or company I name is null or contact name is null or contact title is null or address is null or city is null or postal code is null or country is null. And now we can return this script and there is an issue. Oh yeah, we need to um, we need to remove these, right? Because otherwise it's not syntactically correct. So I'm just gonna go back and delete all these, execute all of it. Okay, so beyond a uh, region, it doesn't look like we have that much of an issue with uh, null values. There is uh, one strange record here, which is not going to show up in your source database because that's a record that I created in my source database. And later during this video uh, sequence of videos, you will also be creating um, new records in your source database to see if they are loaded correctly in your data warehouse. But this one you can, you can enjoy, uh, just ignore. So there is something with this customer, Hongo. Hongo has a null value for the field postal code. And this is the only other field in the entire customer table in the source database. So other than region, the only null field that we have across all of the different fields that we're going to include in the dimension is a null value for the customer Hongo on postal code. So you will need to somehow come up with an idea of how to solve that either directly in the source by going back to the business person responsible for the data quality the, on the customer data. So that would be the, the data steward in Kimball tem terminology and have them fix it or fix it during the ETL by looking up Quark's zip code. One way we could try and find out what to replace this null value for a zip code with is going into Google, putting Quark Ireland postal code, and then seeing what our options are. So if we look worldpostalcode.com, that seems fine, I guess. Then for Ireland, we can find Cork, Cork City North Side and Cork City South Side. Okay, so two different options here, and I don't know which one to choose. So if we go back into the uh, management studio and look at this Hongo, which has the missing postal code, then we can see that the address is Johnstown Road. Now I'm going to tell you that all the addresses here are fake addresses. So there is actually no Johnstown Road 8 in Cork in Ireland, but there is one in Dublin. So I guess they somehow just switched them around, but it's an order for not to the data not to be personally identifiable because this is just in that way. Uh, junk fake data, uh, but you would actually need to try and solve this if it was a real data warehouse implementation, either by going back to your data steward or uh, going on Google and finding the postal code yourself.